again, to study the uh, prevalence of overdose is, is quite a difficult question for the same reasons um, that toxicity is somewhat difficult to assess outside of a clinical trial. So overdose is largely related to uh, dosing calculation errors on the, uh, on the part of staff and clinicians, uh, as well as technical and mechanical failures of the pump. So pump may bolus in 5-FU when it's supposed to be spread over a prolonged infusion. Uh, the rate may be um, accelerated. The pump itself may be programmed correctly and then malfunction. So studying these types of questions is quite difficult because, again, they are largely underreported. Um, and if you look at the rates of overdose, most of them are attributable to pump uh, mechanical errors as well as dosing calculations not so much under appreciation of clearance mechanisms. So most clinicians and staff uh, reliably adjust for renal and hepatic function when needed with, with capecitabine and 5-FU. So overall, the incidence is low. It's quite rare. Uh, and the large majority are attributed to mechanical errors and dosing miscalculations. But to give you a specific percentage of all chemotherapy patients who uh, undergo a potential overdose is really, I'm not aware of specific data sets that answer that question. The recognition of overdose is, is tricky and uh, it's improved by um, hospital-wide and, and healthcare-wide systems such as computerized order entry, uh, which minimizes some human error. Uh, certainly we rely a lot on the communication between all of the office staff, everyone ranging from uh, nursing staff who are programming the pumps, pharmacy staff who are checking, uh, clinicians who are writing the orders and doing the dose calculations in conjunction with nursing and pharmacy. So there's multiple steps to prevent uh, potential overdose and these certainly do improve uh, the rates of overdose. Recognition of overdose when it's happened, um, you know, when patients come back in for assessment, whether it's to have their pump removed, um, or toxicity assessments on an oral drug, asking them how many pills they have left, asking, looking at the pump physically and seeing how much drug is left, if it's all been given or if all of it has been given too quickly. Those lead to recognition of accidental overdose in many cases. Uh, intentional overdose is generally only appreciated when patients present with the toxicity uh, because that is often done uh, when patients are trying to do self-harm. That's a very, very rare minority of chemotherapy patients, uh, and it certainly can be seen with oral agents a little more frequently than IV agents because it's harder for patients to manipulate their own infusion pumps, although certainly not impossible. So it it's largely comes down to communication and, and multiple assessment among providers to recognize an overdose. Certainly early toxicity and side effects are clues to overdose. They are outside of what you would normally expect. Uh, An intentional overdose can be recognized by either toxicity. Family members may call um, and recognize this within their own um, loved ones, um, or emergency room providers may be the first encounter for an intentional overdose. A chemotherapy overdose is generally detected relatively soon in the patient's treatment cycle. So if you take the scenario of a patient who is sent home from an infusion clinic with a 5-FU chemotherapy pump, um, we tell the patient this is going to be an infusion that will last you 46 hours or 96 hours. Those are the typical infusion times. And so if a patient is calling the following morning and saying my pump is alarming and the display says the bag is empty, and you know that that infusion is not supposed to be completed um, for another three days. Or um, they make a phone call in the middle of the night to the on-call physician, same scenario, pump is alarming, the bag is empty. Um, you will certainly have the occasion where um, the patient is given a bolus dose in less than um, the intended time. That tends to be a less common um, issue. In our practice, we have a very hard and fast rule that we will use mechanized chemotherapy administration pumps. There are some devices that are available that um, don't have mechanics involved in them and we will not use those in our chemotherapy patients. We don't feel that there is a good enough index of safety and reliability. We've had cases where um, it, through the insurance they will mandate that that's the device that's dispensed to a patient, and we've had callbacks, um, thankfully, with no ill effects. However, we've had patients that have called and said, you told me that this was going to finish at 2, and now it's 10 o'clock in the morning and it's empty. 
um, or you told me it was going to finish at 2 and now it's 6 o'clock in the evening and it's not empty. Um, so for us it's critically important that we have as high of a device reliability as possible. You will certainly, um, unfortunately, might see a situation where the pump has been programmed incorrectly. And those are situations in which you may have an overdose from a fusional 5-FU. With capecitabine, the scenario can be different. We give patients very thorough instructions that they are to take you know, three pills, four pills, depending upon their size, um, at an interval of twice a day. And we tell them very um, emphatically, if you forget a dose, it's really important that you not double up, um, that you don't take eight tablets at a time. No matter how many times you feel that you're being clear to people, there are always going to be situations where it's um, an understanding barrier, um, a literacy barrier, a language barrier, where there might be a misunderstanding and someone is taking um, more than they should in terms of their capecitabine dose. You could have a patient who calls you and says, you told me that this was going to last for 14 days, but it's day eight and, and I'm out. Um, I need a refill. And that's clearly a red flag that they are not taking the prescription as intended. So the management of overdose uh, starts with immediate cessation of the drug if it hasn't already been completely given. So if this is uh, capecitabine, the oral drug, then you may recognize this in the form of early toxicity, in which case all subsequent doses should be immediately stopped. Uh, in the setting of intravenous 5-FU, if there's any drug left, uh, it should be stopped immediately. And I mean, this is a relatively obvious way of managing overdose, but unfortunately, the majority of overdoses are recognized when the drug has either completed too early, so there's nothing left to stop, um, or it was given in a shorter duration of time than was intended, so any subsequent administration would be stopped. Uh, following cessation or drug discontinuation, um, early intervention is the best way to prevent development of life-threatening toxicities because initially, if the overdose is recognized immediately, the patients will largely be asymptomatic. Uh, and this is, explains why the label of uridine triacetate, for example, uh, includes patients who are asymptomatic from their overdose because you expect that they may go on to get the toxicity if you don't intervene. So early intervention after drug discontinuation involves aggressive supportive care. This is IV hydration, potential admission to the hospital, which is generally the safest way for frequent monitoring and assessment, um, as well as the recognition of the potential side effects which may come, which are mainly the GI, the cytopenias, the nausea, vomiting, neuro, and cardiac toxicities. Uh, we generally uh, manage these quite conservatively, so if there is an overdose that's recognized, whether it be from an oral agent or an infusional 5-FU, uh, we err on the side of caution and treat these patients aggressively. So early intervention with the now approved uridine triacetate is warranted in, in the majority of overdose patients unless you have an extreme level of confidence that the overdose was not clinically significant, which is the very vast minority. Most of these are warranting intervention immediately. In the event that the patient may experience a chemotherapy overdose, we have several steps that we would go through. Obviously, if we have an issue of pump malfunction, we are looking at the displays on the pump. We're recording um, what the intended dose was versus what is reading on the pump. Um, calculating out and documenting what was the differential in the intended dose time versus the actual time delivered. We have had situations in the past where we're concerned about whether there was a problem in the admixture of the infusional 5-FU and we will return it to the pharmacy that dispensed it. Um, there are mechanisms that those drugs can be sent out for testing to verify whether or not there was an unintentional mistake made um, when the drug was um, sent out to us. We certainly have situations where we have patients who, again, will report to us that they have had an issue where they intended that the drug was supposed to be infused over a certain period of time, and then the reporting back that the bag is empty. In a situation where a patient has experienced a chemotherapy overdose, if you're not recognizing symptoms in a timely manner, by the time the patient presents for care, meaning that they're needing to be admitted to the hospital, the spiral of their decline can be very quick. You have a patient who's admitted to the hospital with dropping blood counts, and if you've worked in oncology, you know that the concern is, is that they're going to develop sepsis. 
And depending upon the age of your patient, depending upon the comorbidities, that can be a cycle that progresses very rapidly to a patient that needs intensive care treatment, ends up intubated, needs um, extensive life support, pressors um, in order to be treated and hopefully pulled out of that episode. I will um, tell, talk to you about situations where we know we have to discontinue a drug. We have had cases where patients will report toxicity, um, unexpected toxicity, even when the infusion is not completed. Although I think in some practice settings, there could be a management situation where they would decide, let's bring the patient in for some IV fluids, let's bring them in for some supportive um, management. Because we have had um, issues in our practice where we have seen cases of early onset 5-FU toxicity, we don't do that. We would rather bring the patient in, discontinue um, the therapy, and then take supportive measures from there. In the appropriate patient, if the toxicity is severe enough, we will be initiating Vistagard. We do have Vistagard that's on our formulary. It's in our pharmacy. It's um, known to be available through other sites throughout our health system for the appropriate patients. We really have learned that we're not gonna take a watch and wait approach. There is not um, a benefit to the patient for taking that. You can administer the antidote and prevent the patient from becoming critically ill. In the event of chemotherapy overdose for a patient who's received 5-fluorouracil or capecitabine, there really isn't a benefit to watching the patient. If you know that the patient has experienced an overdose, really you need to administer Vistagard as soon as you've identified what has happened. There are cases where patients, if they're not treated, um, certainly could die um, from the side effects of an overdose, or in, in the, the lesser circumstance, they could experience a, a range of toxicities that would prevent them from being able to restart chemotherapy in the time frame that they should. There have been cases reported in the literature where people experience an overdose and they're so ill that it's months um, before they can resume chemotherapy. And that is such a detriment to the patient. I mean, they're getting chemotherapy because they're trying to fight their cancer and hopefully fight for their lives. And if you're not treating an overdose situation in a timely manner, you can take that opportunity away from them.